G'day, it's um, Alex here, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie, and uh, I'm a, a great fan of the Clansman 320 radios. Um, I've got quite a few of these radios and I use them consistently all the time and, um, and manage to make many great contacts all over the world. But um, along the journey of owning a Clansman radio, I've, um, I've gone through a couple of um, battery repacks and uh, look, I've I've seen, read, and, uh, and and tried a lot of the things that people try as far as repacking their batteries. Some uh, some some people go for some quite complicated repacks that work extremely well. But um, I believe I've got here one that I don't think anybody's tried before, and I'm very very happy with the with the results that I've got. So what I'd like to do is just uh, explain just a couple of things and um, and then get into the to the build of this particular uh, battery repack. In the past, I've um, I've favoured these uh, the metal the metal um, the metal uh, batteries, and um, here's one with a metal top that I've taken apart and repacked with um, five amp hour hour uh, sealed lead acid batteries, and re riveted the top back on, and that's been a, a fantastic battery, and uh, has done done me very very well. I'll just put that one aside. The next one here I've got is a, another repacked one. Uh, this time it's the full plastic top with the metal side and uh, I, I was able to screw um, the top back on again after I'd repacked it with the same batteries, the 5 amp hour uh, sealed lead acid batteries. But this one here, this is my latest creation and, uh, and this is the one here that I'd like to put up on YouTube um, as an alternative for the, um, the repacking of the plastic batteries. And the plastic batteries um, have sort of pose a sort of a problem where uh, a little bit too small to repack with the um, with the with these batteries. Uh, these are the ones we use. Um, so um, what I've done, I've come up with this uh, great idea to um, to modify the 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 old um, plastic battery and turn it into a a brand new battery pack. And this, by the way, I'm really really happy with this project. It's turned out extremely well, <laughs> and be better than I ever expected. And the battery, um, yeah, has the same life as um, as the original, or even more. Um, I go out um, and set up uh, my portable operation. One of these batteries will last me probably uh, up to four four sessions. So I'm really really happy with it, and uh, I've just put together a, um, a a bit of a video on how I've created this particular battery step by step so let's just go through it and um yeah have a look and see what i've done see what you think g'day guys it's uh, it's alex here uh yeah we've had lots and lots of discussions about batteries on the group it's all been great um yeah we've uh, we've talked about repacking batteries using um the metal case batteries and um there's been a lot of talk about uh putting lipo batteries in small battery cases etc etc but um i'm trying something here with a bit of a twist guys um, I'm concentrating on these um, and these uh, sealed plastic batteries, and we've probably all got these duds laying around. And uh, you know, I suppose you could clean them out if you wanted to, and uh, and put some lipo type batteries in there. But um, I've I've been thinking of a cheaper, uh, easier alternative. So um, yeah, I've been thinking about this for quite a while. So I've I've launched on a bit of a um on a bit of a campaign to um to have it going, doing something with these batteries. Um, yeah, these uh, these plastic ones. So, what I've done, I'll put that out of the way. I got myself um, a battery, and I've um, taken all of the crap out the inside, as you can see, and um, I've cut it in such a way. Um, it's probably quite obvious. I don't have to explain it, but um, I've cut it in such a way that I've just left the top and the clip-on sides. Yep, all good. Okay. Then what I've done, I've gone and bought myself two um, SLA batteries and I've cleaned up the surface between them with, um, with alcohol and I've silastic them together so they're nice and strong. I only did that yesterday, it's about 12 hours old. That'll get stronger as, uh, as time goes on. And the idea is to, um, is to slip this case over the top of the... Um, of these batteries and make a battery pack, so to speak. Looking pretty good, eh? The thing about that is it's splaying out the um, 
the, the, the sides here just a little bit. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to change something um, here, perhaps uh, heat that up and bend it down, not sure. Yeah, but it's splaying it out just a little bit as you can see. Now, the other option would be to, um, to cut this off across here and then simply glue um, these sides with Celastic back onto the side. But the whole idea is to try and make myself, well, a relatively uh, brand new battery um, out, of the, um, out of these plastic things. Yeah, pretty low cost. Um, I bought these two for about 24 bucks each. And uh, yeah, that's basically going to be the cost of, um, of making myself a battery. And the whole idea is I'm going to Celastic uh, the top on as well. So yeah, pretty well a, um, a maker replacement battery and then uh, when it's buggered in five years time, throw it away. Anyway, I'll, I'll continue on and uh, I'll, I'll post um, some results when I get it finished. Okay, for the next step of my project, what I decided to do was, um, was actually go for the, um, for the cutting off method. So I've cut off the both um, ends, clamp ends. And the idea is to um, is to glue these um, Celastic these back on to the finished uh, battery um, when I completed it. I mean, Celastic's pretty damn good stuff. They use it to stick um, windows in spacecraft, so I reckon that uh, I can glue that on the side there, and she'll stick like baby shit to a blanket. Anyway, um, the next thing that I've done, I've <clears throat> I've made this packer out of timber to go to go on here so that. Um, It'll um, it'll it'll hold the, um, the the top up to the required sort of height, and uh, I'm going to celastic that on next, and then on top of that I'm going to celastic the um, the top of the box on on the top. So um, that's the next step that I'm going to I'm going to carry out in my build. Okay, next step in the project is to um, make the connections, and um, I've just soldered these on. Yep, made it a bit easier, and uh, I use the original screws here. That I, I took out and the original tiny little lugs and resoldered the um, the cables on there. So yeah, there she is there, all all ready to um, all ready to uh, to glue the um, the top on and um, and move on to the next step. But at the moment, I'm going to allow um, a couple of hours for this to dry before I uh, go on to the next step. Okay, guys, I've uh, moved on to the next step. I've actually glued the top on. Um, and what I did, I allowed that a couple of days to dry, and um, <clears throat> I elected to uh, to do the cut off and uh, and glue on um, uh, type method. So what I've done, I've just trimmed that off there and the other side as well, and um, stuck these end parts on with um, with the uh, uh, silicon sealant, which we call here celastic. Anyway, um, uh, to just finish it off after letting that dry for a couple of days, I've I've put a bead. Of, uh, of celastic around the outside right around and uh, smoothed it down um, just to give it that um, finished look and to tell you the truth it's a uh, it's a pretty pretty neat project so let's sort of have a look at it and compare it to um, to what you know um, what we started off with um, and by the way just a bit of a hint um, when you're smoothing off the celastic sealant um, yeah, a glass full of uh, water mixed with um, a washing up detergent, very slippery. So you just dunk your finger in there and um, yeah, splash a bit on the celastic and then smooth it over with the detergent. Stops the celastic from sticking to your finger and gives a nice finish when you go around and do it. Okay, let's have a bit of a look and, and compare it with what we've got. So yeah, here's was the, the original battery, the original one. So let's compare it to the original one. Uh, just looking at it very carefully here. It's uh, well, she looks like she's probably uh, I don't know four, 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 five mils shorter than the original battery, which um, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but uh, it's shorter. And uh, yeah, so when you look at it, um, there you go. So if I was to if I was to have used um, the special sealant around the top here. You can get special sealant that you can actually um, paint over. I could, in fact, have, have washed this all down with alcohol and uh, and painted the whole thing the original Klansman colour. And um, to tell you the truth, it wouldn't have looked a lot different from the original battery. Now we get lots and lots of uh, people that say, "Oh, 
I don't want to use these SLA batteries. My good, they are so heavy. Um, you know, this is this is not a good option. So let's just have a look and see how the um, how these compare uh, weight-wise with the original. So I give that a bit of a tar. So we'll start off. So let's have a look at the um, the original battery here, and we'll see just how much it weighs. So it's um, three thousand three hundred and seventy-six uh, grams. 3.3 kilograms there she is so we'll compare that with the um, with the um, the new one so here's our our new one here 3356 turns out about 20 grams actually lighter than the, than the original battery so yeah and many people say that this one here has a, a far better capacity than the original battery. So there you go, slightly shorter yeah, and slightly lighter than the original. Okay, so just to finish off, um, in saying it, this, this particular project of mine, this was a prototype. Um, we always learn, learn from prototypes. So if I had to do this again, um, this is what I would do differently. I would cut the distance between there and there to one and a quarter inches I cut mine to an inch one and a quarter even a couple of millimeters longer than that would have been uh, would have been a better length I wouldn't have had such a big gap here to fill up it would have been sitting nicely there and I could have just used a tiny little bead um, looking at these sides here um, it would have been possible to cut around like I did originally and uh, if I had a really good small heat gun, I could have bent that out and then and then bent it back down again. So, yeah, possible to put a bendy type uh, arrangement in here so that the, the clips would fit on the, um, on the slightly wider uh, distance between there and there. Yeah, so looking at it, that's probably the only two things that I would have changed uh, from this project. But I don't have a heat gun, so... Um, there you go. There's the project. And to tell you the truth, I'm really proud of this one. I think this one is really a good a good build and something really easy. Cost. It cost me two batteries. I think they cost me $24 Australian each. And a tube of, um, of the uh, sealant, silicon sealant, I think that was six bucks. So there you go. A pretty cheap battery replacement that works extremely well. Probably lasts me five years. And if I was really keen, I could probably get a knife in five years' time and slice the top off, etc., etc., and reuse it and build it again. So, um, yeah, it just depends uh, how keen you are. But there you go, guys. There's the project. I don't think anybody's ever thought of doing this before. But, uh, yeah, as I say, I'm really proud of this one. It's a good project. Uh, just one last thing I forgot to mention during the build, and I'd like to pick it up here at the end, is uh, below these terminals, um, one of them... Uh, comes into in, into virtually into contact on the SLA battery with the opposite polarity terminal underneath. So what I've done, I've cut a small piece of plastic from a milk bottle and I've contact uh, glued it on top of the battery terminal. So when you put this down, the screw from the bottom of the terminal uh, doesn't make contact with the battery terminal. So this tiny little bit of plastic there uh, will ensure that we don't get a short internal to the battery. Just a brief talk on, on recharging these repacked batteries. Uh, yeah, in order to, uh, to charge them, I've gone for a very simple method. I've simply purchased one of these um, uh, chargers from eBay. They come from China. They're especially designed for uh, recharging 24-volt uh, SLA batteries on scooters. They come, um, they come installed with a, um, a plug on the end of them that normally plugs into the scooter. I've cut the plug off. I've installed this charge monitoring device. You can pick these things up on eBay as well. They show charge current, charge volts, etc. And lastly, I've installed a couple of uh, alligator clips that I clip directly onto the terminals of the battery. Uh, when you first um, clip them on, the little uh, device uh, comes on and the little green light comes on. When you turn the power on, the little light turns red and you can monitor the charge current. Usually from a flat battery, the charge current somewhere around um, you know, 1.2, 1.3 amps. And as time goes by, the current drops down. And when it's fully charged, this will read around about 0.4, uh, 0.3 of an amp. 
uh, just to be on the safe side to make sure that in fact when the battery gets charged this automatically cuts off I use um, a timing device one of these just plug-in timers that goes in the PowerPoint I set it for about uh, four to five hours depending on how flat the battery is and that will ensure that the charger turns off and uh, and doesn't just keep going so yep I've been using this method here for absolutely years uh, with all my repacked SLA batteries works brilliantly uh, very very cheap method for um, for uh, for charging up your batteries uh, and virtually that's that's my project guys thank you very much for watching it hope you get value out of it this is Victor Kilo 2 PRC pedestrian radio calling saying 73 catches again bye bye